Today, I'm going to talk to you about something very special. In fact, when I, when I was putting the title of the message together, someone, says, someone said to me, do you really want to say that? Because I want to talk to you about how God cooks you for the next level. How God cooks you for the next level. You know, um, <laughs> uh, wow. You know, when you talk about cook, you know, a lot of people think about cooking like, you know, getting fortified. Well, how God fortifies you. You know, what I've noticed is this. Over time, I've come across people, and people ask me these questions in different ways. They say things like, why, why am I not moving forward? Why does it feel as if I'm stuck? Some people say, I'm not where my mates are. Some people say that, I don't know what's going on, but things seem just very slow. And when they say that, there's just an underlying assumption that, you know, there's a place I need to be, but I'm not there, and I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. But let me say something to you. Aging is automatic, but growth is not automatic. For you to grow, you have to be intentional. And the truth is, what we've noticed is this. What will help you in this stage of growth might be practically useless in another stage of growth. Look at the story. I, I, I want to share the story with you. I don't know if you know the story of, of, of Apple, Apple by Steve Jobs. You know, in, in, 19, in 1985, thereabouts, you know, Steve Jobs left Apple and Apple began to lose one billion dollars almost every year. Then 1997, Steve Jobs came back. And when Steve Jobs came back, you know, Apple and Microsoft have been rivals. So I said, where is he going with this? Just, just stay with me. I, I just want to show you something that what is helpful in this season might not be helpful in another season. It's, it, that, that's how it works sometimes. So in 1997, they brought Apple back. And when they brought Apple back, before that time, Apple and Microsoft, and Microsoft are like, you know, competitors. And Steve Jobs looked at everything they were doing, and what did he do? He said, the first thing he's going to do is that he's going to go into a strategic partnership with Microsoft. And that would have been an awful thing to do, because Microsoft was at a place of strength. Apple was not at the place of strength. So the negotiation would have not been on an, play, on an equal playing ground. And if you have, you know, if you do business or you're on a central entrepreneurship, you know, that's a, no, no. Then he looked at all the range of the Apple product because they were making huge losses, losing almost a billion dollars every year. And he says, we are making too many things. I thought he should say, we're not making enough, of, enough things. And he began to reduce and streamline what they were making to focus on the core purpose of Apple. Why am I saying this to you? Sometimes the way to get to the next level is that you have to unlearn where you are currently, and begin to learn new things. Sometimes what delays you or holds you back from the next level is this. There's so much knowledge and attachment to the old level that you cannot go ahead. So, see what Steve Jobs did. Very, very instructive. What he did was that, oh, this was good for us, but it's not good for now. That's the reason why, have you noticed, 50% of all divorces happens within the first five years of marriage. What in the first five years? So it was spectacular with it. It's not really about the devil. It's the fact that when people get married, all the things they know and learn as singles that they have to dump when they get married, they bring into marriage and they're not able to adjust. And because of that, there is a half a lot of what of, of marital problems. And I'm saying this to you because if you're going to grow, if you're going to grow, you're going to learn something. The key to growing to your next level is you on learning what you know and learning new things. That's what it's going to be sometimes. You know, I read a great chapter that said, he said, the 21st century illiterate will not be the one that cannot read or write. He said, it will be the man that can learn but cannot unlearn. Because guess what? Things are really changing. And as we bring this into our teaching on discipleship, because that's what my focus is today, I'm saying that how does God cook you? How, how does God cook you? So if, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a career person, you need to know something. If I need to move to my next level, how am I going to do that next level? There are things in my next level I need to know, and there are things I need to unlearn to move to my next level. That's really powerful. Do you know that when you enter the company as an as a entry officer, all you need to succeed is a lot of technical skill. But once you move to middle management, what you need to succeed is no longer technical skill. What's it? It's now it's that managerial skill. Just imagine that shift. And that's why a lot of people become managers and now they become they struggle because they don't know what to do as managers. They were very good as people that did the work. But when it comes to managing people and managing systems, that's so difficult. The same thing, the same thing with entrepreneurs. When they start a business, it's really good. But after two years, I don't know if you know this, 45% of businesses collapse in the first five years also. 
Because what they need to run, they don't know. The same thing with a Christian life. Listen to me. What made you a strong Christian the first two years, it may not be enough to help you go farther. For you to go farther, you may need to unlearn certain things and learn new things. Let's see the way Jesus Christ said it here. In John chapter 15 and verse 1, look at what the Bible says. This is very powerful. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth no fruit. He says, he says every branch in me, rather, that beareth fruit, beareth not fruit, he take it out. And every branch in me that bears fruit, guess what he does? He says, Everyone that is productive in me, everyone that is growing. He says, how does God make him grow some more? He says, when son is growing, God will take what is growing and purge what is growing. My God, what God does is so powerful. He takes this person that is growing and it begins to remove from you. Because sometimes when you need to go farther, you need to carry less weight. So it begins to take out from you. He will take out some habits. He will take out some values because he wants you to grow. Listen to me. The next step of your growth, either it has to do with business, either it has to do with your career, or with your Christian life is that you have to unplug certain things so that you can go ahead. So God's principle of God is very certain. He says, the way I'm going to grow you is this. I'm going to pull out some things. Unfortunately, most of us feel insecure because these are the things we're used to. Most of us feel insecure because these are the things that brought us here. And God says, I want to take you farther. I want to take you deeper. I want to make you stronger. But for you to go stronger, you must let go of those old things and bring new things. That's why the Bible says, forget the former things. Consider not the things of old. He said, behold, I do new things. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So the key is learning and unlearning. Ha, huh. what do you learn? Luke chapter 9. This is very powerful today. Luke chapter 9. This might be a good time to call someone to join this, to join this and watch on any platform you're watching on. And if it's a blessing to you, hey, I want to thank all of you that send me messages on Instagram and Twitter and emails. It's refreshing to hear from you. You, you send yours today. Listen to Luke chapter 9. This is very powerful. Verse 23. See, I know I started from the story of Apple and how Apple, you know, had to make certain changes and unlearn certain behaviors to become more effective. But that applies to a business principle, you know, I just love to teach like Jesus. How does Jesus Christ teach? He will use stories in the natural to illustrate the spiritual truth. Just imagine secular companies will want to, want to become more effective or profitable. What they will do is that they will streamline to become more effective. They will have to unlearn some to become more effective and pick up new behavior. What about in the spiritual? What about in your pursuit of God? What about in the discipleship journey? What does it look like? For you to grow deeper in Christ, for you to go deeper in the things of God, you have to unlearn certain things and pick up certain things. Some things were okay at a certain level of spirituality. At a certain level of spirituality you could say some things at some level of spirituality spirituality you could do some things but when you go deeper some things are not allowed again this is the way Paul says it he says all things are lawful but all things are not expedient in another words he says all things are okay but I can't do that all that can I cannot I, I cannot I'm sorry I cannot because I'm at a deeper dimension because what happens to you is that sometimes you have a Christian and you have a Christian, say, I've been an old Christian. You are not an old Christian because you've done it for 10 years. You are an old Christian because you've gotten deeper. Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. The Bible says, and Jesus said unto them, if any man will come after me, let him, see, see last week I spoke about the first line. If any man will come after me and if you miss the message, my God, go back to it. It's on YouTube. But he says, if any man will come after me, that means the first thing is to pursue because the proof of desire is pursued. You can't say you are serious about your Christian life and it does not show your pursuit. If you are serious about knowing Jesus more, it's going to show in your time. It's going to show in the spend of your resources. Your kids are going to know that you are serious about showing Jesus. You know, someone asks me, how can I get my kids to pray? I said the first thing that you must be a man of prayer because children don't become what they hear, they become what they see. When your kids see you basking as the father, as the mom, in the glory of God and they, oh, poro kotoro bakaske, blah, 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 and they can see you worship in that way, what happens? They begin to pay attention that this is very important. It's difficult to teach someone to pray when you do not pray. 
It's difficult to teach your kids to value church when you sit at home and you're off in the kitchen and off here and off here. That's not the way you receive the God's word. You, you put your kids beside you and you hear them hear the, hear the word of God and they see how you're taking notes and they go, that is it that serious? Say, my God, this is a function of heaven and hell. Glory to God. See what the Bible says here. It says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. See, see that, that's the point I'm going to. He says, the first thing you have to do if you want to become a disciple is that you have to follow. What does come mean? Come means a change of direction. Hey, I was going like this normally. You know, this is me pursuing my dreams. This is me pursuing my dis- desires. This is me pursuing marriage. I'm so into marriage. I'm looking for the guy that's going to marry me. Oh, my, my six-pack. Oh, that knight and the armor, that's what I'm looking for. I'm on this, I, I'm, I'm a married man. I just want to care for my family. All my three kids, I want to really care for them and send them to Spain to school and want to do holidays in the south of France. And that's wonderful. That's your direction. But just Christ says, if you want to f- come after, if you want to follow me, you must come. Come means a change in direction. I want to go here. He wants me to go there. That's what shows you serious. Question, are you going where the flesh is taking you or you're following the direction of Jesus? Anybody can claim, oh, you know, you know, I love Jesus. <laughs> Listen, the love of Jesus will show in a change of direction. The love of Jesus will show in a change of direction. You cannot become deeper in Christ until you follow entirely. The level of following Christ will determine your depth in Christ. It's a come. Question, what area are you struggling with God? What area have you given yourself an excuse that, you know, this is not what God wants for me, but God is touching that area. Is God talking about your priorities, how you place your job and making money above Him? Is God talking about how you place kids above your prayer time? Is God talking about how you place your career above Him? Is that what it means? Is God talking about how you place your uncertainty and fears above Him? The reason why is this. If you place Anything above your relationship with God, you've given Satan something they can mess with to distract you. Satan will start playing you. He's going to play you like a toy. You know, you know, you know, you know those things we had when we were younger. Um, they, they call them. Um, they call them. Um, I think it was some some kind of a show. And, and you know, in, in those shows, um, it's puppet show. It's puppet show. You see the puppet going tom tom. You know, like that. And they're pulling the strings. When Satan knows that your job is before God, every time he wants to distract you, it touches your job because he knows you can't do anything. When Satan knows that to marry a husband is before God, every time he wants to distract you, it touches the husband. When Satan knows that money is before God, every time he wants to distract you, it touches money because he knows that these are the things you value before God. But what did God himself say? He said, thou shall have no other God beside me. He says, I'm a jealous God. You have nothing. There must be nothing in your heart competing for my space. It's either I'm the Lord of all or I'm the Lord of nothing. And that's huge. Because many of us are sharing our hearts with Christ. Christ stays in one pace, then career stays in another place. And I'm not saying career is bad. I'm only saying that Christ is first. Everything comes second. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So he says that if any man will come after me, the next line says, let him deny, deny himself. That's what I want to say. He says deny himself. Deny himself says I'm not priority. Deny himself says in terms of my relationship with God, I am not priority. Nah, nah, nah. I am not priority. That's what deny. Deny means that whatever I know, uh uh-uh, zero. He says, I deny. All the things I want, I unlearn. All the things I know, I unlearn. Paul says, everything I know before, I make dung for the purpose of the high calling. And that's where he starts from. See, we have what I call a selfie generation. What the selfie generation? In the old generations, our father will worship Amadiora and they will worship Shanghai and they will worship all these idols. But in this generation, the idol we worship is, is ourselves. It's called the self idol. It's who you are. So you hear people say, Oh, this is what I want to do. This is what I feel like doing. It's about how you feel. It's about how you want it. It's, if it's not convenient, it's not God. And we worship ourselves. And God says, You cannot know me that way. He said, The biggest thing I'm going to fight with when it comes to you is that you must deny yourself. You must be able to say no to yourself. Some people say, Will you fast? Oh, no. You know, when it comes to fasting, 
I always have pains in my stomach. That's why I don't fast. Do you go to church on Sunday? No. You know, I just do church, you know, in my own way. Do you read the Bible? Uh, well, it gets so boring. Listen to me. A lot of things are boring and useful to your destiny. And a lot of things are enjoyable and destructive to your destiny. He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Question. Someone says, how do I know if I'm growing in Christ? Are you growing in denial? Let me say this to you. If you are a Christian that, wants, that is growing in Christ, there are things you cannot say because you are denied. There are places you cannot go because you are denied. There are movies you cannot watch because you are denied. There are ways you cannot spend your money because you are denied. There, 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 there are relationships you cannot have because you're denied. If you're a Christian and you're able to do everything, it shows that you are not growing as a Christian. Because the mark of a growing Christian is denial. Do you know what it means to forgive and not walk in unforgiveness or bitterness? That is so difficult sometimes because some people are so mean. But because you are a child of God and you understand what it means to be a Christian, even though it hurts you, you deny your feeling and you what? You do it. You forgive. You forgive your husband. You forgive your wife. You forgive your mother-in-law. You forgive your colleague. You for forgive that pastor, that person in church. You forgive them and begin to walk towards it. Many people say, I've forgiven. But this is how you know if you're forgiven or not. This is how you know if you're forgiven. Every time you think about that person, what's the feeling inside? Is it a pain that something evil should happen to them? Or it's just a numbness? When you forgive, that's what you experience, a numbness. You just become indifferent. It could hurt, but you wish them well. And the reason I'm saying so that a lot of people that say they've forgiven are actually living in, in bitterness. That's the truth. They're actually living off. And if you, and listen, under the sound of my voice today, maybe you're the person in the kitchen. Maybe you're the lady on the couch. Maybe you're the guy eating food and watching this right now. And you're just hearing this as you drive. And you're struggling with forgiveness. You have to stop for a minute because God wants to sort you out. God wants you to sort that out right now. Either your name is Victoria, or your name is Ope, or it's Funke, whatever you want. God wants to sort that out right now. Because your unforgiveness is going to open doors to darkness, and that's going to be very destructive. So Jesus Christ said, if you come after me, he says, deny yourself. A growing Christian is a follower of Christ. The degree of following determines the lack of spiritual growth. So someone says, how does God prepare me for the next level? Listen to me. God has no problem in taking the next level. But God is saying, before I take you to the next level, I have to prepare you for the next level. Listen to me. There is a prepared place for you, but God has to prepare you for the prepared place. Let you become what? Let you become a nuisance in your prepared place. The prodigal son had this breakthrough and messed it up. Many people, if God blesses them the way they are, they will mess up their breakthrough. They will mess up their marriage. They will mess up their finances. They will mess up the job. They will mess up the name of Christ. So what God does is that before you get there, like Israel, He takes you through a journey. And in that journey, He builds into you patience. He builds into you maturity. He builds into you some strength. He builds into you self-discipline. He builds you some stamina. Because there's something you have to get into. There's something you have to move into. The question is this. This is what God wants to do in your life. Are you opening up for God or you are busy resisting the Spirit of God and say no and say no and God says I want to prepare you for your destiny. It's time for you to leave where you are. It's good to be here but there's a place you have to go to. Come up here and how God prepares you is this. He needs to build and cook you from the inside. Oh, glory to God. <sighs> so how does God grow us? The Bible says, how does God grow us? Because I just told you, the same thing in business. You, you saw the Apple story. There's another story like Lego. The same thing with Lego. Lego, the toy company, the same thing. How did they grow? They had to streamline some of you are in business right now. And for you to grow, you need to learn the principle. You have to do less to do more. And how God draws you, he begins to empty you. You are too full. When you are too full, let me put it some other way. When you are not hungry for God, 
is because you are full of other things. What can you be full of? <laughs> you can be full of the cares of life. You can be full of money. You can be full of yourself. You can be full of pressure. You can be full of pleasure. You can be full of, you know, all those things that people are chasing after. You can be full of just the rat race. You can just focus. Let me show you what this looks like. What does it mean to be Look at my table. This table is nice. This is Fanta. Let me show you this Fanta. Wow, this is nice. Mm, this is nice. So if, if you're in church having Fanta, you can have one in your home also. But guess what? Look at This glass is going to be Fanta full soon. Nice, Fanta full. This is water. This is water. It's God, Holy Spirit, symbol of water. Guess what? When I try to put the water inside, I don't know if you can see through the camera, what happens? It begins to overflow. Why can't the water stay? Because the glass is full. The reason why you don't, you're not hungry for God is you're full of other things. Your glass is full. Some of you are full of, of, of money, your, that desire for money. Some of you are just so full. Just, my family, my family, my family. Your political ambition has filled you. The desire, your entrepreneurship has filled you. Your desire for other things has filled you. And God is saying that, hey, if you want me to come in there, make space for me. Make space for God. Will you look at the person sitting out next to you, even if it's your wife in your sitting room or someone that is on the other side and say, hey, make room for God. Make room for God. There are many ladies that all they pray about is God, give me husband. Lord, give me husband. Lord, give me husband. If you don't give me husband, and some other guys, oh, I just want money. I just want money. I want... It, all those good things are good, but God is more than that. God is not a magician. God is not a magician. What God wants from you is to have a relationship, not to give you stuff. Giving you stuff is wonderful, but He wants a relationship with you. He says, if anyone will come, he's going to deny himself. Someone says, why is it important to grow? Because the truth is this, God is going to cook you. You want to go to the next level? God is going to cook you. And you must allow yourself to be cooked. Cook means God is going to prepare you. This is very powerful. This is really very powerful. How does he cook you? He's going to, he's going to what? The first thing you have to do, deny yourself. Someone says, okay. Because, let me tell you something. A lot of people be like, I'm a Christian, but I'm not that deep. <laughs> Listen, it's amazing how human beings define different grades of Christianity. Listen to me. The same way there are no different grades of sin, there are no different grades of Christianity. You are either Christ's own or you are not Christ's own. Shocked? That's the truth. You know, I'm a Christian, but I'm not really into it. You are not a Christian, brother. <laughs> Listen, well, how do I know that? When you were bought, born again, you were bought by Christ. When you were bought by Christ, you are no longer your own. Your choice is no longer your own. You are bought with a price. You belong to God. So your choices are not your choices. So I said, well, why is it good to become a, a Christian? And, and this is what it means to become a disciple. Who is a disciple? A, fully follower, a full follower of Christ. This is what it means to be a disciple. Just imagine the other day I was invited to the presidency, you know, in Nassau Rock, and there was some other, you know, presidents there. Where, and you just say, oh, Pastor Brad, will you just come and say hello and give us some prayers? And as I went to the Nassau Rock, my assistant went with me, who is like my disciple. And as he went with me, you know, when I got there, of course, everybody knew that you were coming, oh, sa, 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 that kind of, you know, feedback. And guess what? Everybody just walking me, walking me, yes, sir, yes, sir. Then all of a sudden, my assistant that walks with me, Everyone was saying yes, sir, yes, sir, to him. The question is this Are they saying yes, sir, to him because of who he is or because of who he's following? They are saying yes, sir, not because of who he is, because of who he's following. When you are a disciple of Master Jesus, everywhere that he has access to, 
that it commands attention that they say yes sir, to him you have access to it also so when does open it doesn't open just for him it opens for you you can also speak to things because you have the same access you have the same authority the reason why I can command virus to die and I can command witchcraft spirit to be expelled is because as the master has authority he's given unto me I'm not an empty disciple the disciple carries not just the role the responsibility but the authority of the master so he says in my name cast out devils oh glory to God let me bring it a little backwards you know what Jesus Christ says see what the Bible says he says Jesus came back and before he left back finally to heaven he says all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me he said go therefore and make disciples what does that mean because I have all power go and make disciples that will have I will be able to use all the powers I have and they can use it in my name. Some of you want to see the power of God in your life. You want to see miracles happen in your business. You want to see some kind of dimensions to answer prayers. Where does it come from? He doesn't come by the charade and be like, oh, I'm born again. No, sir. He comes from a private work, a deep work, a personal work of being a total follower of Christ. Is it going to cost something? He's going to cost you something. There are friends you will not be able to hang around with. There are values you have to change. So I say, you know, I'm not used to church. You have to change that value. So I say, I'm not used to Bible study. You have to change that value. So I say, I'm not used to giving to God like in form of tithing and offering. You have to change that value because he's going to take some things. There are places you can't go. You can't just go and watch all those places where, you know, you have all those things that are immoral and all of that. Glory to God. And God is challenging. Listen to me. Today, God has challenged a lot of you because why? You've stayed in your Christian life. You've stayed in that Christian space for such a long time. Some of you have become lethargic. You've become backslidden. And it's time for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon your soul. It's time for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon your heart. It's time for that lukewarmness to go. It's time for that lethargy to go. It's time for you to be hot for the Lord and passionate for Jesus. It's time for you to get up in the midnight and say midnight prayers and take the Bible and the Bible comes alive and let the power of God flow through your being. Oh my God. How does God grow us? God grows us because growth is not a miracle. It's not. Growth is the effect of, the, of applying the right principles. How does God grow us? God grows us by pruning us. Paul says, Timothy, if a man purge himself, for you to grow, there must be pruning. For you to grow, there must be pruning. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Joseph, God had plans for Joseph. The next level of Joseph was to become a prime minister. But when you become a prime minister, you can't talk too much. You're going to know state secret. You're going to know deep secret that you can't share. So how did God grow jo Joseph? He had to take him to experience where he had to shut up. Because Joseph was a dreamer that was talking too much. So the first thing that God did to him was he, he took him to a pit where there was nobody to talk to. Praise God. <laughs> he was busy growing him. Then when he left the pit, it took him to what Potiphar's house as a slave. The slave talks, but his talk does not count. Then he, you know, because he's a slave, he's owned, he should not be saying nothing. Then it took him to a prison where he can talk, but his talk is behind bars. By the time he was done with the process, he had learned how to manage his mouth. Sometimes it's not God holding the answers to your prayer back. It's just the fact that you are refusing to allow God to prepare you for the next level ahead of you. God wants that company to move from $10,000 to $100,000. God wants you to move from that $100 million to $2 billion per year. But God knows if I give you this thing, you will be wrecked. And God is saying, how can I begin to prepare you? And instead of allowing God to prepare you, begin to resist God. So why do people resist God? The reason why is this. Discipleship is going to cost you something. Why does it cost you something? Because the, the denial means change. Change means pain. It means pain. God is going to tell you, stop that, and that's what you love to do. God is going to tell you, give that. And he's like, God, give that, but that's what you want to hold on to. And it's going to cost you something. But what I've come to embrace is this. There's nothing that God tells me to do that's my disadvantage. Hallelujah. You know why? Because God is not selfish. The Bible says God is love. God is not selfish. God is love. So how do you grow? The first step in growth is this. Accept responsibility for your spiritual growth. 
you have to accept responsibility. Don't say, well, we know we're just at home. You know, what will I do right now? Listen, we can be at home, but God is only in church. Accept responsibility for growth. Every morning during the meeting, Monday to Friday, I am busy leading people in prayer at 6.30 a.m. Get up from bed and just begin to go. That's what it means to accept responsibility for growth. Get a good Bible and read the Bible. And what does that look like? Let me tell you something. A lot of you know what will help you grow spiritually. But you're not doing it. You know why? You just don't want to accept responsibility. A lot of you, what will help you grow spiritually right now is that if there's a relationship you are in that someone can hold you accountable and say, hey, have you prayed? Did you see Shinena yesterday? Did you kiss Laquida last week? You know, did you hope you didn't go to that pawn site again? Hope you didn't do that the other day. When you, when you have those conversations, it will help you stay on track. But because you do not want to grow intentionally, you intentionally stay out of the conversation and indulge yourself with things like, you know, I, I watch online. No, sir. If you want to grow, you have to be accountable. The reason why is that it takes a disciple to make a disciple. People are not disciples by themselves. It takes a disciple to make a disciple. What Jesus told the disciples, he said, because I've discipled you, go and make other disciples. You can't just disciple yourself. You need to find people that disciple, that can disciple you also. And that's what I want to say to you. Anywhere you're watching from Abuja, Canada, London, London, anywhere, send an email saying, I need to find a place where I can be discipled because I know I'm not discipled right now. That's what it means. The second thing you have to do is this. Deny yourself. What does deny yourself mean? Restrain. <laughs> it says Restrain. When self is denied, you flourish spiritually. A lack of restraint is an indicator of spiritual maturity, immaturity. You prioritizing yourself, what you want, what you desire over the things of God is an indicator of low spiritual maturity. The second thing is restraint. <laughs> What did Paul say? Paul says, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, he said, I therefore put myself under subjection. I take my body, I put on the subjection, lest I. The third thing you have to do is this. To grow spiritually, you have to unlearn. What do you unlearn? Unlearn certain values. Unlearn certain perspective. You know, some guys, every time a girl that's really good walks beside them, they will tap the other guy and say, ooh, Mike, look at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, and... I'm going to tell you, you have to stop behaving that, that way. Some of you, the only thing that makes you shout is money. You say, ah, man, I got it. But what is that for prayer? You will just behave as if nothing happened. You're passionate about money and business, but not passionate about the person that gave you life. The reason why is this. You have not learned how to unlearn your values, your perspective, your behavior or your response. You know, I, I train myself, even though I'm at home and I'm even though I'm at home and I'm watching someone on television. You know what will happen if I see something that bless me on the word of God? I say, praise God. Oh much. I'm praising God. Even if it's worship, my hands are up. See, I don't just watch the service on television or on the phone or laptop and just go, you know, I'm sipping something. No, sir. This is the time for the Holy Ghost. My spirit, oh paratatata. My spirit. Spirit is open. My mind is at a lot. I'm expecting something. Right in my house, my hands are up towards heaven. I'm saying, Lord, do what you can do. Holy Ghost, fill me. Did you hear the testimony the other day that as, as the service was going on, there was a man that was stroke. This is just three weeks ago. Had stroke on the bed. As, whoever, as the worship was going on, bam, he stood up because faith was released. Glory to God. You have to unlearn. Someone said, I have to unlearn. And I'm saying to you because you can grow as an old Christian and not know you have to unlearn. How do you unlearn? Three things to unlearn. The first thing is this. For you to unlearn, you have to be open. Open means you have to be accessible and you have to be willing to learn. See, I've met people that want to grow spiritually, but they are so insisting on what they think is right, which is not scripture. You have to be open. You can't keep saying, ah, this is what I think. What does the Bible say? The second thing you have to do is this. 
you have to be accountable. You have to be answerable. There should be someone that can watch out for you. And that's what I want to say to you. If you want to grow spiritually, you have to find a way to get to an e-group. An e-group is an online community provided by our church. Send an email and say, I want to be in an e-group today. Because you just need someone that can say, hey, have you prayed today? You know why? Because it's disciples that make disciples. Churches by themselves don't make disciples. Jesus Christ said, go into the world and make disciples because it's disciples that make disciples. You cannot take someone to where you have not been. Oh, so ta ta ta. You cannot take someone to where you have not been. It's when you have been to the deep place of the Spirit, you can talk about the deep place of the Spirit because you've been there. Like Paul says, he said, things that we have touched. Peter said, things we have touched, our hands have humbled. Oh, what is he talking about? He said, of the word of life, of the word of life. And the last thing is this. I can teach you the water tomorrow. If you are going to go to the next level spiritually, you have to practice. Why? It's not hearing the word that makes the difference. It's doing the word that makes the difference. I can teach you about prayer from now to next year. Or except you, except you start praying, you don't see the result. I can teach you about the need to give and be generous. Help the poor, tithe and give. Until you begin to tithe and give, you will not be able to go far. Listen to me. The journey of the discipleship it's not in the theoretical learning it's in the practical journey of taking steps listen it, it might be and this is why i tell you if you want to start if you want to start so i want to start being a stronger christian right now this is how you start don't take a big step it can be too big it can collapse just take one small step just say i'll pray i'll, I'll pray for three minutes today i'll read two verses today that's how we start small steps that are consistent are better than big steps that are inconsistent Glory to God. I said glory to God. I'm telling you something. John 15, 2. Jesus Christ said, The tree that bears fruit, the way the Father takes it to the next level, is that He pushes it. He takes some out of it. I want to ask you, is it time for God to take some things out of you? It could be painful, but let it go. Let it go. That relationship that you need to let go. That behavior you have to let go. Their habits you have to let go. Some of you are picking up the wrong thing and God say, let it go. And pick up new habits. What are new habits? New habits of prayer. New habits of passion towards God. You know what passion towards God is? You know, some of you just pray and there's no passion. Father, Father. No, sir. Passion towards God is you want to worship God and your, your whole being snows it. Oh my God. It's a same you want to jack. Port. You, your hands are towards heaven. Your, your face leads up. Oh Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you are great. You're beautiful. Oh, there is none like you. As you're praying, you're overwhelmed with the passion for the Lord. Tears streaming down your eyes. You're being broken in God's presence. And people say, what is wrong? You say, I'm sorry. You can understand it. Because English cannot explain this to you. This is deep. This is strong. That is what it means to be in the presence of God. How can you be a husband and you're not challenged your family to pray your kids don't see you pray how can you be a mother and you're not a woman of prayer how can you be a single person all you do is just follow all those young girls all around and you don't know to pursue God stop pursue women pursue God you have rich people that all they have for their wealth is garage and cars that are not rapturable it's time to say no Lord I want to start building investment in God's kingdom let's pray And Father, let the fire of your Spirit follow everyone that is here. Even when the service is over, let them have a compelling desire to engage in prayer, to engage in prayer, to engage in prayer, to take next steps. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.